Now that the structural analysis is done, we need to scale the base shear force from response spectrum analysis to match the static base shear. In section 12.9.1.4 of the AC7 code, it talks about scaling the base shear from the response spectrum analysis. According to this section, if the dynamic base shear is smaller than the static base shear, we need to apply a scaling factor which is V static divided by V dynamic. So the first thing we need to do is compare the static and dynamic base shears. To do this, let's go back to E-Tabs. From the Model Explorer, go to Tables tab. Then navigate to Analysis Results. Structure Output. And then Other Outputs Items. Right-click on Story Forces and select Show Table. This will display the table of forces generated on each story under different load cases or load combinations. To make extracting the results easier, right-click on the story header and select the lowest story, which is story 1. Next, right-click on the output case column and select the load cases EX EY, SX base, and SY base. Then click on Apply Multiple Item Filter. In the Location column, activate only bottom. This will allow you to see the base shear values for both a static and response spectrum analysis in the X and Y directions. As you can see, the dynamic base shear values are smaller than the static base shear values. So we need to apply the scaling factor. We'll copy the values into a table so we can easily calculate the scaling factors. The scaling factor for each direction is the ratio of the base shear force to the dynamic base shear in that direction. If you remember, when we set up the load cases for the response spectrum analysis, we used a scale factor which was equal to I over R times G. This value was applied to the response spectrum curve and used in the analysis. Now to apply the scaling factors that we calculated here to the response spectrum analysis, all we need to do is to multiply these values by the previous scale factor and enter the results as a new scale factor in ETAPS. So we multiply the scaling factors by the previous scale factor the result gives us the new scale factors which need to be updated for the load cases S6, SY, S6PN and SYPN. To do this, we go back into ETAPS and unlock the analysis model from here. Keep in mind that any changes we want to make to the model after the analysis requires unlocking it. When we do this, all the previous analysis results are deleted and the analysis will need to be run again. Now that I've unlocked the model, I'll go to Define menu, and then to Load Cases. Here I need to modify the load cases SX, SY, SXPN and SYPN. As I mentioned earlier, the load cases S6 base and S5 base don't need to be changed because they are only used for scaling and their scale factors are applied without updating. So I'll click on SX and modify it. Here I'll enter the new scale factors for the extraction. and click OK. I'll repeat the same process for the other load cases SY, SXPN and SYPN. Now we need to run the analysis again.
As you can see, the analysis of the structure is now completed.